right, so before we can add any borders to our quilt top, we need to get this thing squared up all the way around. As you saw in the last video, I was pointing out how that I had some extra room where I could trim off uh, down to the quarter inch. Uh, since this is my first uh, cut in the squaring up process, I'm going to leave about three eighths of an inch all the way around and see how that looks. And if I feel like I need to actually take it down to a quarter of an inch in some areas, uh, I will do that and then go back around and make it a quarter of an inch. But I'm going to set my 3 8 mark, and that's your smallest mark going across. Just count three of those smallest marks and end up there. And I have my ruler squared down here even with this block. So this corner block is perfectly uh, square here on this edge. So I'm going to go ahead and make my first cut here. Uh, also keeping in mind I have a 24 inch ruler. It's, a, it's the longest one I have. So I'm just going to kind of split the difference between uh, where that lines up at the, at the top up here and uh, keeping my um, square down here and then watching to see that I have at least three eighths of an inch. So that looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off the excess right through there. So my next step is just to pull down again to that next one and I'm going to match up my 3 8 of an inch down on this one down here. Oh, you can't see it. Hold on just a second. Let me pull that up. So now that I've trimmed that up to about this point, I'm going to lay my ruler on there and I still have uh, my 3 8 at least here. So I'm going to slide my ruler, ruler over to the edge right here. Here's my next little intersection. I'm leaving 3 8 and then I'm going up to my next one and it's, it's quite uh, wide it's about a half an inch so I'm gonna stick my 3 8 mark right on that tip and trim okay and I'm leaving this on for now until I continue till I get to the very edge uh, top edge here and I'm my whoops there's a spider <laughs> I think I killed his baby a while ago he's coming over here to look for the baby so let's see here is my three eighths right here and then I have my uh, corner squared up up here I'm even going to walk around and make sure yes looks fine so I'm going to go ahead and trim that off there we go so that side is trimmed off perfectly straight now I can go to my other side and do the same thing so here is my corner down here I'm going to just match up all the edges with this ruler and then move it over to the 3 8 inch mark and it's squaring up really nice on that corner. So let's see, I think I can just go ahead and make sure you don't have any of your quilt top underneath where you're cutting. That would be a disaster. Okay, so on that one I'm a little short of the 3 8 but I still have plenty here to sew, sew in a full quarter of an inch so let's let's try another little section here I think I'm gonna start right there and see how this will line up There's 
my three eighths again. So, okay. The main thing is, is don't cut off too much. Go at it a little um, conservatively at first. You can always come back and trim off more excess. Now see, I've got a wide one here. This one is probably 5 eighths from the tip of that, that block right there and over to this edge, but here it's not. It's more like about, well, it might be about 5 eighths. This might be 3 quarter, close to it anyway. So I don't need that much. So I'm gonna find my 3 eighths mark again and put my ruler down here where I stopped cutting, right here. and match it up to this edge right here I probably did more like a half an inch I probably should pull that back just a little so let's try that again make sure this edge is right at the edge of your ruler because that's where you stopped cutting Okay, now let's see what we have left. Okay, so I'm going to put my ruler up to the top here, even with my triangle corner, and then my ruler back down to this edge that I just cut. So put the ruler right there. My 3 8 is right on it, right on that tip. So there we have both long sides done. So you can do your ends the same way, exactly the same way. So um, like you see here, here I have a little bit more, here I have probably at least three eighths so I could probably take my my ruler and match it up right down here on the bottom and over and that actually is exactly three eighths of an inch so you can just do that same thing on both of your ends so after I trimmed all four sides this is all that was trimmed off not not that much Probably the widest piece I trimmed off was about a quarter of an inch. So don't be scared about squaring up your quilt. Just just go for it. Um, start out cautious and only take a little at a time because you can always go back around and take off more, but you can't add more back on very easily, especially when you're dealing with points. Hope that helps. Okay, let's talk about borders. Uh, I'll show you what I've done and then um, maybe some other options that you might want to consider. Uh, I wanted to use up some of my half square triangles that I had extra. So I put them together like this. So this is two and then two. This is a strip of four. And so I decided to use that border this way it's a little bit complicated what I'm doing, so don't feel like you have to do this, but it is a way to use these up. Now, unless you resized all of these, which nobody wants to do, you, you could get it to go to the edges, all the way to the edges, kind of like what I had mocked up in the last um, video that I showed you this on. I think it was a Finish It Friday. I had it up on the board and I had the uh, triangle borders all the way up to the corners and it was squared off real nice and everything but the measurements don't come out exactly right using this size you'd have to resize these so since we already have all of these cut and made then you know I didn't want to you know redo that so this way I can use up most of my triangles that I had extra from the uh, extra pattern fabric cutting I had you do early on. So uh, what I've decided to do is take some of my black uh, scraps that I have left over from these pots and form some corners. And if you do it this way, your top would need to have 
um, seven of these points and your sides would need to have 10 to come out with an almost perfectly symmetrical corner out of the blacks. Now I have put in a two inch uh, strip here of, of background fabric. So I have that on already and that uh, measures, makes my quilt top measure 54 and a half inches wide by 71 inches long. So using those measurements, um, that's how I came out with, with this top. So what I'm using for this, for the outer border on the top and the bottom are the seven points, which these are three and a half inches each one, three and a half by six, I believe. And then that makes you need a corner piece that's three and a half by six and a half to sew that on. And that will take you to right here. And then you'll work on your outer border to meet up to that. Now that means that your side borders, you need 10, 10 of these points down here to get another black corner on the bottom. And that piece of fabric is going to be three and a half by eight and a half. So your three and a half by eight and a half will attach to your points here, your half square triangle uh, point border that you've made and then that will attach on to this side of your quilt once you've got your your top on now what i'm showing is two different kinds of fabric here but actually i'm going to pick one and make it make the entire corner and then my other corner will be another uh, same print on the, the top strip and the side strip so um, that is something you can do if you want you can do whatever kind of borders you want to do on your on your cactus pot uh, quilt. This is your quilt. You can add one wide border. You can do several solid borders. You can do it however you want. Um, just have to do a ma some math. So this isn't really part of the, the pattern itself, but it is an option for you if you want to do something like what I've done here. And then uh, some of you have suggested that I would um, add some some color here on my cactuses like I have in the small uh, print here and that that is an appealing idea I, I may do something or I may do one of these bright pink or red uh, fuchsia shades as a binding once I get it quilted so I'll, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna play it by ear I kind of like to to do things uh, by the moment <laughs> because I changed my mind so much but uh, if your goal is to use up some of your half square triangles that you had left over like I did then this is an option for you so I'm going to go ahead and sew all this up together and let you see what it looks like in the end all right the borders are all on I did make another <laughs> change because I changed my mind I did decide to make each of the corners uh, the two uh, strips that I use one going horizontal one going vertical uh, out of uh, different fabrics instead of the same I thought maybe the eye would go right to those if uh, I used the same print in each corner so I decided to to mix them up like this and then two different ones there, two different ones there, and two different ones over here. And I even got my little doggie just walking by right there. So I did not change my upside down block because, I mean, you have to really look to see that that's upside down. From here, you can't even tell. You have to get right up on it to be able to tell. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. I hope you're happy with yours as well. If you haven't started the project yet, just look uh, for the playlist for the Cactus Pot on Point Quilt. And all of the videos are there for that and the accompanying information, PDFs, extra videos, things like that uh, in the description boxes of those videos. So I had fun making this, I hope you did too. And if you haven't made it yet, go ahead and check out those videos. Thank you very much for following along with me on this sew-along. 
and I'll see you on the next sew along. Oh,